Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dicing with Death. Uh, so what is the name of this, the greatest enchanter on the plane? Uh, my, uh, my mentor, uh, Kale. Kale. He'll, uh, he'll whip up a, a charm that will, uh, Knock the misses uh, right out. Wonderful, wonderful. And is this a, a charm that we can uh, hold in store? Because we'll, we'll need to come back, you know? Is this a... We'd like two, one for the trip over and one for the trip back. Is that, mm. is that a workable solution? Or is this a charm that must be cast immediately before voyage, directly upon the target? Oh, Kale must... Uh... Must do the casting himself. And I'm afraid he can't leave the city. Well. Let us speak with this wonderful Kale. Um, where, where could we find such a, a, a great caster? <laughs> Why, he's just down the street. In the... Um, library recorder, perhaps? No, no, just a, just a warehouse down the ways, but oh, wonderful! Come, I can, I can, I, and he's in the process of like shutting up his shop. So that's can... that's great. I, I, with a smile on my face, I walk out with him. <laughs> um, Michelle and Toe, I, I whisper in her ear the details of what transpired because she was off looking at other wares. Mm-hmm. All right, and what do you? So, what do you say to her as you're like? Uh, All right, honey, we're we're we're, we're going to call it the enchanter, who's going to be able to prep the sleeping spell for you. She has no idea what you mean, but uh, the apothecary closes up shop and uh, flips the open sign to close, locks up the door, and leads you down the road. Wonderful. And to a warehouse deep in the old quarter. Wonderful. All right. Um, and you approach this uh, medium sized sandstone building. Mm -hmm. um, made of massive yellow bricks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sandstone stacked and yeah um, and you enter through a small wooden door cut off into the side and I think there's a larger door for like pulling in for like a double door horse right. size or something like that for like backing in a cart right right we happily go in through the front wooden door yeah um, the apothecary eagerly you know rushes to uh, let's get some Some background sounds. Could probably even find an apothecary sh shop if I dug it up long enough, but uh, production value here, man. <laughs> uh, there's an antiqui antiquarian study and the Raven Puff Common near the end of the list that are both pretty solid for that. Mm -hmm. If you ever desire. Antiquian Commons. Is that what you said? Yeah, maybe. St Antiquian study or Raven Puff common. Raven Puff? That's some, that's some Harry Potter shit, isn't it? Yeah, it's Harry Potter shit. It would work well for a a, a magic tower or someone studying magic or a bunch of shit that'll work. Whatever. <laughs> Um, so, I am excited to meet... Kale, the enchanter. Kale, <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, me too. Um, so let's go. There's an alchemist's lab. Mm hmm. It's a spooky one. Yeah, it's got all sorts of like bubbling things and crows cawing in the background and cages and. It's all in, all in short. All right, fine. Raven puffs it is. There's got to be a better way to manage sounds in roll time. Okay, there we go. Okay. So you reach Kale's warehouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what sort of wizard lives in a warehouse? You find yourself thinking as uh, you are led through the um, through the front door. Exactly the sort of wizard I'm looking for. I think. Uh, right. So I I look for the the wizard in question. Um, yeah. So you walk into. Um, I think the small door opens up into the hole of the of the warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's a big so you you enter a small door next to a set of huge double doors and to a uh, cavernous st stone warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, the room is lit with um, torchlight. Uh, they're spread throughout the room, and there are several robed figures within. Several. Mm. Yes. Um, uh, speaking and whispering to themselves, and they sort of look over at you as you um, as you enter. And the come, come uh, says the apothecary as he leads you across the room. I go across the room. Um. All around you, you can hear sort of whispers of the. Of, do you, so? Do you do you approach or make eye contact with any of the uh, the gathered? No. Or do you just walk past. I, I just follow the unnamed apothecary um, mm -hmm. and go to where he goes. Uh, I, I do glance around the room, but I intentionally don't make eye. Well, fuck, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a recognizable figure about town. There's mm -hmm. only so many silver-haired elves walking around, so I, I will go ahead and take a, a good look around the room as I enter, and but follow mm -hmm. the apothecary. Okay. Um. Yeah. The now that you uh, roll, I guess roll a perception check. Twenty-one. So looking around the room, you see that all of the. Uh, Um, all the figures appear to be wearing matching robes, similar to the one the apothecary is wearing. Huh? Um, and they've got like different sashes or scarves or or things, but the, yeah. Um, and I think uh, yeah, they continue to talk amongst themselves as the apothecary leads you through the center of the room. Um, when one does approach your uh, your guide, did you catch his name? And uh, whispers into his ear something. Can I uh, hear it with a detect noise? You can no. attempt, but miss. Uh, this one is a uh, a taller man. Mm -hmm. um, hood thrown back, um, and he like leans in and uh, I don't know, speaks sternly to your guide. No, <laughs> and yeah, they appear to be having a yeah. I, an animated but hushed conversation. I will and lean it in over to you, and the pop like when it becomes the moment it becomes awkward. The apothecary says, "This, uh, uh, friends, friends, this is uh, um, this is uh, Hans. He is uh, of my of of my order. Um, he was just uh." 
Well, I'm sure he'd love to to welcome you and that. <clears throat> that's like a yes. Well, um, and he the the tall Hans extends a hand and bows slightly. I don't trust this you... situation in the slightest, but I shake his hand <laughs> and give him a fake yeah. smile. <laughs> He kind of he gives a grimace. You're not sure what you, what you um, what you I don't know what their conversation entailed, but he he appears to be just as put up to this as you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and he uh, gives a stern look to the, to this to this apothecary that led you here, and sort of steps aside. Mm. Hans, is it? It's a pleasure to meet you. Mm. Uh, wish would be that I could say the same. I... Come, Hans. It, it will. It, it'll be fine. No, the, this. This. Did you? Did, he didn't even give your name to the spot. You just. You not. just followed a stranger down a street to it to his warehouse cult. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm looking for some sketchy shit. So I think that's kind of how it goes when you're right. in the market for sketchy goods. Uh, Colonia, what are we doing here? Michelle says as she gives you a nudge. Uh, I whisper to her, I really feel uncomfortable here. This place is extremely dangerous. Keep your spells prepared. We might have to fight our way out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, come, Kale is downstairs. And... Uh, and the apothecary continues to lead you to it. You know, you've, you've, you've crossed the room by this point, right? And there's a there's a there's a you know a stone staircase on the far side of the room. Okay, I want to get to the stone staircase and look back across the room and get a head mm-hmm. count of how many people are in here. Uh, there are there are six, not including the apothecary, and yourself and Michelle. Okay. Uh, but but yes, that but six includes, includes Hans. Hans. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then, and they don't. They, they yeah, yeah. Um, all right, all right, I got it. They've actually, yeah. Uh, so I look down the staircase with a lot of question, in my face, and say, uh, "Hale is down here." He nods, uh, probably taking a, a torch off the wall. I notice he is uh, he is human. Mm-hmm. Interesting that you need to bring light down into Kale's room. Does a Kale not usually reside in a well-lit room? Uh, no. No, my, uh, my mentor does not like the light. How appropriate. My, let's go. I, I motion forward. <laughs> All right. Uh, he he gestures for you to step down the uh, down the stairs. I will step down the stairs first. Is it going me, Michelle, Hans, apothecary? Is that Hans is not coming. Hans is up with the uh, oh okay with the group of uh, cultists on the first floor. Cool. So <laughs> I'm gonna walk. Can I see the end of the staircase from where I'm, st- I'm standing? Is it like a short staircase or a long staircase? Um, it is a short staircase. It's just down like one one floor, right, and it I... curves like an immediate 180 and enters into a room that's uh, beneath you. I will. Or not a full 180. It's like a I guess just 90 degree turn from your initial starting point. So it goes okay. straight down and then to the right into a dark room that you can't see. Sure, I will go to the bottom of the staircase, uh, holding Michelle's hand as she walks down to keep a connection between us in case shit goes wrong so that way we're stuck together. Uh, And when I get to the bottom, I wait for Apothecary Boy to come down. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, Um, you step to the bottom of the staircase. Um, um, the, The... Floor below. Um, the staircase is a little long, so I guess it's about fifteen feet, which is about the height of the ceiling in the second mm-hmm. second floor. Um, you look into, uh, I mean, darkness out to your sixty feet of improvision, right? Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that all it is? 
Michelle yeah. comes up behind you, followed by the apothecary. I motion to the apothecary he, to he leave sort of the steps way. to a level with you and steps into the doorway and holds the torchlight out, which actually doesn't even go as far as as you can see uh, at the edge of your. I mean, so you can see out in the gray haze of darkness, uh, columns mm-hmm. down along the the center of the room, They're like supporting the stone floor above you. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and there is a moment of uh, a lull, a moment of stillness. And you, uh, I and motion you, for the apothecary to step in. Um, he holds the light into the into the chamber. I would feel very awkward and... entering this room without uh, first having been introduced. It's it's an elven thing. Uh, would you mind doing the introductions, good sir? <clears throat> but of course. And the, uh, your apothecary uh, steps into this uh into the columned chamber. Um, you follow and walks, and walks down the down the center of the room. Uh, Michelle whispers some word word of caution. Like, what are you really? What are you? What are we? What are we doing? Um, roll a perception check. Fourteen. God, I don't have enough HP to do this. Um. All right, you notice nothing. But I, I'll whisper back to Michelle, nothing nothing risked, nothing gained. I wish... thinking how I uh, wish I had maps or something set up. But hey, we're doing a theater of the mind. Mm-hmm. So you are led uh, into the darkness. Floor two of the uh, old corridor warehouse that you have been led to. Um, the apothecary holds the torch light and steps out. Um, you probably make it about 60 feet. Uh, how close are you to the apothecary and to Qualnir? Well, I am Qualnir, so I'm infinitely close Sorry, to him. To, and Michelle, how close uh, are you? I think I'm holding Michelle's hand as we're walking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I stay five feet from the apothecary. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, uh, let me just let me look something up. And remind me those distances again. Uh, adjacent to both of them. Hand holding with Michelle, five feet behind Apothecary. Okay. Come on. Your spell list is too big, Neil. It broke my computer. It'll, it'll fix itself. <laughs> what? Do I do this the old-fashioned way? Um. 
Okay. Interesting. Okay, so I don't even think okay, you don't even notice anything. Um, but I will give you another perception check um, as you step. I don't know, as you step like some sixty feet into the room. Mm -hmm. All right. So. So roll, did you make a second perception check? Uh, I, no, I did not. Well, 17. All right. Yeah, your eyes have not adjusted to the light. God, what is going on with my internet? All right, I think I've got... It all loaded. Roll one for Michelle. Actually, roll intelligence checks, maybe, for you and Michelle. So my int check is a 20. Michelle's int check is a 17. OK. So you are uh, woefully oblivious. But the apothecary sort of like turns. I think he reaches out excitedly and uh, touches your your arm yes uh, can you can you feel him I feel you uh he yeah okay uh, he, I guess he let, let's go with his, uh, with his hand he is close but he's in a he's in a mood um This guy is so fucking sketchy, but I'm actively trying to meet sketchy people and improve my network of sketchy people. So as mm -hmm. much as I want to murder him right now to save myself, I don't feel comfortable murdering him. So I will, I'll keep going on. Um, and you know, while my one hand is holding Michelle, my other hand will be rent resting on my short sword of swiftness. All right. Uh, would you say that that thought is probably a surface thought in your mind right now? Uh, yes, I would say that's exactly the thought. The like, these yeah. people are sketchy I, and they might be here to kill me, yeah. but I kind of need a, them. Roll a saving throw versus spell. Uh, I need a 13 or higher. Oh, only a five. That's no good. So as you're, uh, as you find you're, you're thinking that of like, all right, I'm gonna get ready to stab, whatever, you know, get jump on him with my sword of swiftness. You notice something weird. You're feeling a really light on your feet, as if the floor is like dropping out from under, and you look, and you're slowly starting to levitate into the air. It's the weight of your body is just taken off of you, and you're you're moving up. I hold Michelle's hand. <laughs> um. And she's like, with, with, probably with your with the hand that was going for your sword. <laughs> no, because I was holding her hand already, and then my other hand was on my sword, so. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. you reach out with your left hand. Yeah, grab, yeah. grab Michelle. She's like, what is it? And it like, looks at you as if you're crazy for a second, but then I, yeah. I think she realizes that I'm floating. And then her eyes go wide. Um, 
with care, and I think she just kind of looks through you. Um, do you want to roll for initiative or something, or are you just... Uh, uh, I will speak rather are than you... roll for initiative, because okay. I'm floating in the air. I can't really move much, so I'm in a pretty disadvantaged situation here. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wonderful the apothecary. The, you see the apothecary is dropped to his knees mm-hmm. um, and is kind of, I don't know, muttering to himself or something. You, uh, what do you... Okay. Oh, okay, mighty Kale, I have come seeking your services. Your faithful servant has brought me here. I feel we have a relationship that could be mutually beneficial. Let me look something up. Cool. All right. Um, you hear back uh, echoing through your mind. Faye, what is it you could offer me? Um, Michelle needs to make a saving throw versus spell. Uh, okay, she will. As we crank up the tunes. She too needs a 13, and she too fails. She fails. So, Michelle finds herself they're favorably disposed to to Kale, the which I guess to you guys at this point is only the uh, the power emanating in the darkness of your uh, of, of your mind down here. Mm-hmm. Um, does Qualnir speak? I don't know if he immediately realizes that Michelle is. Uh, I, I doubt it. He sort of so she had looked at you with terror as a and. And then now she, yeah, she okay, and then she she suddenly put it put it very much at ease, right? And, and he's facing the uh, the yeah. voice had said something like, "What could we possibly have in common, or something like that?" He asked you, "Yeah, what could you possibly offer me?" I can offer you a great many things. Um, actually, I think Kwanir, or sorry, Michelle has let go of your hand, okay. so you continue to float upwards. Uh, I mean, I don't let go of her hand. If she lets go of mine, I continue to grasp onto hers. Mm-hmm. Is she going to like forcibly remove my hand from hers? Um, casually. So I guess you can, yeah. I will, okay, you can, can, I will maintain my grip on her. Okay, so you're floating like a foot off the ground maybe. Yeah. If you're like tugging on Michelle, you can pull yourself down, I think. Why don't I'm, you I'm just gonna up? float. I'm not gonna tug myself down yet. I'm just gonna keep floating where I am and holding on to her. Okay. Mm. I can offer you wealth, influence, a fresh supply of sacrifices. Is this woman the first? No, she is not. Who are you to deny me? I deny you nothing. I am offering to provide you with much in exchange for favors. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. You are not worthy of my favor. Test me then. Set me against this. Word. This uh, cowardly servant of yours who trembles at your very sight. He trembles on cue. Quanir 
Quill in there is left in silence. Only the sound of uh, the apothecary sniveling. Name your enemy and I shall strike him down for you. And then you shall take care of a problem of mine and we shall grow wealthy together. I want not for wealth. Only disciples. And today you have you have brought me one elf. I have brought but... you a disciple, not a sacrifice, not a meal. I have brought you a willing and upcoming spellcaster, one who would very much learn from you. Michelle's not gonna like this. She is far too classy of a lady to study in a joint like this. Ah. Yes, I see this one has a beautiful mind. Too beautiful for the likes of you. But for now, shall suffice. Um... I have 60 foot infravision. What can I see? Um, the ceiling must be just just above me, right? Because we only want the ceiling's down on the, on, the ceiling's only 15 feet high. Yeah. Okay. Um, and can I can I see the door behind me? Did anyone close it? I don't think Michelle closed it. As there well. was no door. Oh, the bottom of the staircase. Yeah, was there a doorway? Was at just the an, of the there was a door uh, frame. Uh, okay. An open portal. Okay. Um, so can I see the, the portal behind me then? Um, yes, barely, or at least, you know, it's just there. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's within 60 feet or it's not within 60 feet. It is within 60. It's, it's just about 60 feet where this okay. is all happening. Perfect. And can I see the other end of the room? The, the end opposite of the door? Um, Maybe, maybe now that your eyes are starting to adjust, it's just about another 60 feet. So that's kind of what I was having you roll that second right. perception check for. Um, and beyond that, I think you can see the, the outline of a hooded figure standing more than 60 feet in the darkness, but not much more. Okay. So like just, just at the edge of your infravision range. Uh, and can I see the height of this figure? I thought height is a great indicator of someone's power, but yeah, man-sized, six okay. feet. Um, set me down. Let me kneel before you, so that we may broker a, a, a trade. Um. Okay, you are set back down. I will let go of Michelle's hand and mm -hmm. walk across the floor to uh, kneel before the shadowy cloaked figure. All right, uh, you walk towards the enrobed figure in the darkness. Um, you hear again in your mind, uh, you come to offer yourself to me? <laughs> this was easier than I expected. Uh, I take a knee before the figure. And I think it's at this um, point that I like- As, yeah, uh, okay. 
as you approach, you 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 hear a hissing um, over. So there's like a back. There was like a background hiss to its mm-hmm. to its voice. Um, and you approach, and you, you sort of can you can hear an actual. It sounds like a, an actual mouth sound mm-hmm. that it's making. That kind of blends in from that uh, that psychic noise. If that made sense to you, that makes sense. What were you saying you did as you uh, as oh, you. I, I kneel it? down as he's saying this thing. Go to one knee, the other foot still up. How close? Um, uh, I want to say like eight feet, something like that. Okay. Um, and then as I get to the floor and bow my head, I want to draw my weapons and just throw myself at this thing. Although since it's got ESP, it'll probably see it coming. Um, yeah. But I'll I, do... this fucker is way too sketchy and I found a way to profit off of this, off of murdering this person, so I'm happy. Sure. Um, make a another saving throw versus spell to conceal. Maybe just an int check. Okay. To conceal the to like consciously conceal a particular oh, thought. Oh, not so yeah, good. So I think you really got a short so of swiftness. Uh-huh. Um, let me think how I want to resolve all of that. Um. You did a good job of not telling me. I mean, I, well, anyways. Um, I came up with the... Yeah, and for whatever re- Okay, so you can make that first sort of swiftness attack, a sort of quickness attack, I think. Regardless. But, right? I, even I if, did yeah, make it even all the way up here without realizing I wanted to kill it until I got to it. And then I was like, oh, I can profit off of killing this thing. Okay, this is a better okay. route. All right, so Sword of Swiftness. Here we go. Uh, an 18 to hit. Um, that will hit. Let's do... Five points of damage. And then I think I need to roll initiative for blood letter. Yeah. His... All right. Five points of damage and five initiative. Five points of damage, you say? Uh huh. All right. Um, you, so you, from a kneeling position, eight feet away, you leap up to, uh, sorry, what did you, you've got a five of initiative on blood letter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, actually go ahead and just make that, a, you get both attacks off, I think, before anything reacts. So just let's resolve the two attacks. And then... Um, I don't think I have a dual wielding proficiency. I think Bloodletter is at a you have, hit. You have high dex, though. Yeah, but it's the first attack has no penalty. The second attack has a penalty of two, I think. The offhand. Okay. Um, so, but, okay, Bloodletter is magic, though. It is. So there'll be a penalty, which is then offset by the bonus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so Bloodletter comes in with a six. Good. Okay. Oh, I am ambidextritis. Yeah. Oh, never you, mind. you rolled for ambidexterity or something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that should actually be an eight. Yeah. Not yeah, that's okay. So you you lunge that eight feet to the creature, slashing out at it, landing at least a nick with your short sword. Um, um, and looking up uh, in your to your horror, um, you see the source of the hissing as there's as four whirling tentacles uh, lash around about a hideous beak of a mouth. Oh God, I don't um, even know what this is. Um... And I think you lock gaze with its glassy eyes on either side of the tentacle. Um, 
as um, it lashes out with a uh, turbulent uh, mental blast that just originates from it and echoes down the hallway. Oh um, you, I think in your mind, you just hear a, gr- a grating cacophony of noise and maybe even uh, assaulting all of your senses, right? Roll a saving throw versus spell for you, Michelle, and I guess I'll roll one for uh, the cultist back there. All right, so uh, Colnir and Michelle both need 13s. Colnir fails. Come on, and Michelle. Michelle fails. All right. Um, All right, uh, you're both stunned. Uh, Qualnir hits the ground. Okay. Um, Kale <laughs> steps over and past you to collect Michelle. And I think you watch as the, the Mind Flayer drags Michelle into his Mind Flayer lair. God, how long am I? For um, how long am I stunned? You were out for eleven rounds. Sweet Jesus. Um, Michelle only for five, but I don't think. Yeah, let's see. Um. I'm, tr- I'm looking up the effect of the charm to see if I assume that's probably broken. Cast her in the She's adding. Give Michelle another saving throw versus spell to see if she charms through it, because I think she'll probably still have well. Another saving throw versus just, spell. Just, yeah, just 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 so I know when that tick when the fail. Yeah, so I think she's still charmed, even after the stun. Ah. Um, eleven rounds. Oh, let me roll for the. What's what was your saving throw versus spell? Um, five. No, I mean your your actual say. I'm trying to sort out what that cultist. Oh, what the, the my save is thirteen, but I, I rolled a five. All right, I think he would have failed as well. He's out for not as long as you. But his, I think his his charm is broken, so he runs for the service. I think Qualnir wakes up some. 11 rounds later, which is, I guess, probably eight rounds after you watched uh, Kale dragging an uh, unconscious Michelle out into the darkness. I run into the darkness. Yeah, I think Michelle is juicy enough that he's not just going to eat her right away. Um, uh, weapons drawn, collected from the floor. If uh, they left my hand somehow, I will run into the darkness. Uh, and try and save Michelle. I think... Let's let's go to break here, and then we'll decide out where what 
where to go from there. All right. So we'll see you guys on the other side of the darkness.